Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'll be talking about the most insane Dungeons and Dragons campaign you'll probably ever hear. And as a matter of fact, the lore is so convoluted and crazy that I'll have to make a whole separate and quite, well, frankly, quite well edited video on it. So expect to see that in the future. But number one, uh, I have to say that this is a homebrew kind of campaign. It was kind of loosely based on the rules of Dungeons and Dragons. However, most of the time it was, um, what do you call it? I guess I had my own rules added into it, own mechanics. Um, and it was set during, a, I believe like the era of the musket. So around the 1700s, all the way to like the late 1900s. So yeah, that's like 200 years <laughs> worth of uh, lore right there, which I'll cover later, hopefully. And as for the art itself, um, this actually does take place, and this takes place around what we'd call seasons. Yeah, we had a whole season thing going on for this campaign, and this would have taken around the second season, in which it was a World War One themed um, campaign. And the main objective of these um, of the players is to hunt anomalies, prevent them from getting involved into the war, and ultimately, uh, essentially, serving their country indirectly. And they do it through this uh, private company and whatnot. It was a it was a very interesting system. But before we get into that, number one, we'll need to talk about first season. You can't just jump to the second one. The first season, of course, uh, takes place around the 1700s, late 1700s, specifically the year 1783. I believe it would be a year before the war between England and America would have ended, I think. And it takes place around January of that time. And the whole campaign specifically revolves in that one year. That's what the title was called. It was called Paralum 1783. And that is, um, that's where we'll basically expand from there. Number one, uh, it was mostly a kind of, uh, it was actually kind of similar to the second season in which you go out to hunt these anomalies, but this time they're more like mercenaries. Instead of, uh, going out to hunt anomalies, to which they kind of did, so they hunted down, like, weird creatures and whatnot. Instead, what they did was... They went as uh, security guards or did these small jobs for um, uh, the highest bidder and whatnot. And it eventually starts to escalate to the point where I start to introduce these completely absurd monsters, uh, completely overpowered characters. We've had these things called witches. And as a matter of fact, if you've seen my first video on this channel, I was drawing... Um, a witch next to a creature called the Bewitched. And if you want to find out more, you can go ahead and watch that video. Now, first of all, that in itself just began to ex escalate until it became like a full on, uh, what do you call it, a war between like two factions and they had to get themselves involved. Then there is the second season in which that's what I'm uh, drawing. It was, a, as I've said before, it was around uh, companies uh, being hired by government to take out these anomalies, and that was the main purpose of it. But it became a very intricate system of a uh, very small piece of detail of law and whatnot. And over time, it just became uh, so complex that I had to note down everything. And usually I could just remember things off the top of my head. Even if it was complex, but this was all another level. If you ever played Metal Gear Solid or understood its lore, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, this particular soldier that I'm drawing here is part of an organization called the SGUO, a private uh, PMC of some kind that was um, kind of like an independent uh, group from the Germans. They served under them, but again, independent and they were acting against the player group 
who served another company called WIS. And in this particular piece, I wanted to, well, I wanted to put them in the normal uniform at, in like during World War One, but at the same time, I also wanted to demonstrate how technologically advanced they were. And so I just made them a very advanced looking gas mask and whatnot, even though most of the equipment you see here is kind of fitting to that era. And essentially, the SGO acted as an organization to promote these anomalies, to get them into the war, push them against their enemies and use them to the best of their abilities. And eventually they developed these super high-tech machines that are like 50, 100 years ahead of their time. And to an extent, which I'll not spoil for now, because I want to detail this in a future video, they technically win. This organization technically wins. And to be exact, it was kind of like a mutual destruction. But given how the player characters ended up, it was, um, well, I would argue that the group managed to gain the upper hand and win. Of course, um, as you can see, I put minimal equipment on them, despite I put up like a bunch of bags and whatnot, but I mainly put around, what, like three bags, three satchels and one pistol. This particular unit, I wanted to show them as some kind of elite force. They don't need that much equipment and they'll navigate fine without it. And that's exactly what I think I did a pretty decent job at doing. And excuse my bad uh, coloring skills, I'm not exactly the best at that, but I gave my shot regardless. And you can see I gave them a little patch on the side, and of course a Mauser from a top-down view, the best I could do for a gun. I wasn't, I'm not entirely that good at drawing modern styled uh, equipment, but I think it turned out pretty fine. But overall, uh, that is the piece right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys next time.